Hello fifth graders! Here I am in homeroom blue and as you can see the maps have made it up on the wall, your lovely maps, homeroom green, your maps are on the wall also. And I wanted to tell you that our class pet is really sad that you're not here. Did you know we had a class pet? Mrs. Pierce has a class pet for homeroom green and there's a ticket that you can use to take care of this class pet during the day. And if you take care of him, I have a feeling this is how he would feel. <laughs> I wanted to share some history with you. I found a book that is a fun picture book about Columbus. So I just wanted to share a few things in it that I thought were fun. Hope you enjoy. I wanted to share this kind of cheesy book. You wouldn't want to sail with Christopher Columbus. Uncharted waters you'd rather not cross. There's a few fun things, details in here that I thought would help us in our understanding of Columbus's voyages. So let's talk about this page. Could you handle a sailing ship? We're supposed to be putting ourselves in the shoes of these sailors. Columbus is taking three ships on this voyage, the Pinta, the Nina, and the Santa Maria. Like all other vessels, they are made of wood and are powered by the wind trapped in their sails. Handling a sailing vessel is not an easy task. It takes strength and experience to raise and lower the heavy sails and real courage to climb the tall rigging. If too many sails are hoisted, the masts might crack or the whole ship might capsize. If there are too few sails, the ship cannot steer a safe course and will drift dangerously at the mercy of the sea. So this I thought you might find interesting, the three ships right here. The Santa Maria was designed to carry cargo. It's strong but slow and hard to control when out on the open sea. The Pinta, do you recognize that word? What it is, a caravel, we know about that. A ship with a sleek, narrow hull, fitted with big square sails. It's the fastest of Columbus's three ships. And the Nina is a small, light caravel fitted with triangular sails. It rides the waves and should be easy to handle, even in storms. I wanted to show you some of the things that they use for navigation, some of the tools. Which way would you steer? You head west across the Atlantic Ocean. Columbus thinks there's land in that direction. Plants unknown in Europe have washed up on shores facing west. Columbus has read books which make him think that Japan is only about 2,734 miles away, but it's 9,320 miles further. He calculates that he should reach it quickly. Just in case he doesn't, he's decided to keep two logbooks, one for himself to record the true course he's steering. The other shows a safer route closer to land to calm the fears of crew members like you. To help you navigate, here are some navigational tools. An hourglass measures time and calculates how far you've traveled westward every day. This astrolabe, I think that's how you say it, is used to work out your latitude, which is the distance north or south of the equator. A logbook is where you take notes of the journey, throw, they would throw a line and wait to check the depth of the water. Obviously not a person would be attached, a weight would be attached. A lookout, send someone up to the crow's nest to spot hazards. A compass, you all know what a compass is. Dividers are metal pincers, which measure precise distances on charts and maps. And then they would use this traverse board, which would mark, the helmsman marks each change of course by sticking a peg into a board. It's a little bit more difficult than GPS, wouldn't you say? And then I thought these were good maps that show just a really general picture of where Columbus thinks Japan is. He thinks that you just go right there and you're to Japan, just a quick journey. When in reality, let's think about what he has to cross to get to Japan. We have this ocean here, the Atlantic Ocean, North and South America, the Pacific Ocean, and then he would end up in Japan. We know where he ended up, right? What is it? The Bahamas? The last page I wanted to show you was about what life was like on board. Could you cope on board? Think about that as we read this. Life at sea is tough. You have to keep the boat ship shape or neat and safe, but it's crowded, cold, damp, smelly, and infested with fleas. It leaks and has to be pumped out every day. There are no beds or chairs, except in Columbus's private cabin, so you have to sleep anywhere you find space. You can't get used to the system of watches. Four hours on duty, then four hours rest, so you feel tired all the time. Some older sailors amuse themselves by gambling, arguing, and criticizing Columbus. 
I want you to look at these things and think about your life compared to life on board this ship. Eating. Forget table manners. The cook spreads food out on deck and sailors help themselves. Washing. You can wash in seawater, but there's no soap and sailors do not shave. Think about how people smelled. Ooh, the toilet is just a wooden seat attached to the side of the ship. When the water, when the weather's bad, find a dark place in the hold. Ooh. The bilges are usually full of slimy, smelly water and rats. There's, most ships are infested with rats. Are you itchy? Ask other sailors to help comb the lice from your hair. That makes things seem pretty great in our lives, doesn't it? I just wanted to give you a little bit more information about Columbus through this cheesy book. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're having a great day.